Hello, everybody. My name is Aki. I'm a content creator based in Japan and Malaysia. Today, we're going to be talking about this little beast Insta360 ONE RS 18360 Edition. RS 18360 comes with dual winning sensors that are co engineered with Leica, which allow the camera to capture beautiful, crisp 6.1K 360 images. I've been using this camera for quite a while since the last night showcase project, and the low light performance on this camera has been absolutely incredible. So, this time, I decided to push the limit of ONE IN360 edition even further by taking it to some of the harshest shooting environments in Japan. Throughout the journey, I'm going to give you guys several tips on how to get the best image quality out of RS1 in 360 edition, as well as some cool tips for nighttime lapses. Are you guys ready for it? Let's get right to it. Thanks to its large volume sensor and state-of-the-art flow state stabilization, RS1 in 360 is probably the most suitable camera for low-light hyperlapses on the consumer's market. First, let me show you what this camera is capable of under street lights. Honestly, you can just shoot with auto setting and get pretty good results. But if you want to get the best image quality out of this camera, always shoot manually. Connecting the camera to Insta360 mobile app is going to help you check live preview and adjust settings. Make sure the resolution is 6.1K, color profile either standard or vivid, 24 frames per second, shutter speed 1 over 50, ISO 160, white balance 4000 because the street light is very warm. Now it's time for editing. Once you import the footage into Insta360 Studio on PC, you can scrub through the timeline, drag the mouse over the footage, and play with all the buttons. If it's your first time working with 360 image, it's gonna take you a little practice. But since it's a 360 image, you can pan it, tilt it, rotate it, whatever you want. You can put as many keyframes as you want in the timeline, and the AI is gonna smooth out the keyframes accordingly. Let's reframe the footage and give it a cool motion. Set a keyframe in the beginning of the clip and change the parameters in a pop-up. For the field of view, I'll go for 100 and 0.2 for distortion level. This is sort of like the sweet spot for hyperlapse to have the most dynamic yet natural perspective in my opinion. Let's give it a 360 rotation throughout the footage and a little bit of tilt in the middle. Lastly, click the thunder icon to speed up the footage by 6 times and there you go. There are literally infinite possibilities for reframing, so do your own experiments. I'll show you another example of hyperlapse but in a much darker situation. There are basically two ways to make the footage brighter. One, simply increase ISO. The highest ISO on this camera is 3200, but you want to keep the ISO as low as possible to avoid the risk of getting a grainy image. The other solution is to use slower shutter speed. When you're shooting 24 frames per second video, the slowest shutter speed is 1 over 24. But if you're familiar with 180 degree rule, you might say the shutter speed has to be double the frame rate. Well, yes, for normal speed playback, but this is a hyperlapse we are shooting and we're gonna speed it up in a post-production so it doesn't really matter. In fact, the slower shutter speed creates more motion blur so it's actually better. So here is the setting. 24 frames per second, shutter speed 1 over 24, ISO 2000, white balance 4500. You can simply use Insta360 Studio or even mobile app to reframe the footage. But I know a lot of people end up in Premiere Pro for further edits like adding caption and color grading. So isn't it great if we can do the framing in Premiere Pro? Yes, we can. Search FX Reframe on the internet. You can download the plugin for free. Open up footage in Premiere Pro, type FX Reframe in the effect box, drop it on the footage, and you get pretty much the same function as Insta360 Studio. Add keyframe inside the effect control panel and and here is the result. Somehow the playback on Premiere Pro is heavy, so if you have a problem with that, you can decrease the playback resolution or simply use Insta360 Studio. This is a kind of low light situation where people wouldn't even try to shoot with an action camera. The scene is actually very dark to naked eyes and seems almost impossible for any kind of shots. But if you know the right setting, you will get something like this. You could simply use the time-lapse mode and let the camera do all the work. However, I highly recommend you to manually adjust the setting according to the shooting environment. 
Here I used Innova mode. Make sure the file format is JPEG plus RAW because RAW image stores more information than JPEG which will help us in post-production later. ISO 500, shutter speed 5 seconds, white balance 4500 or whatever looks most natural but don't go for auto. A long exposure will help increase the amount of light and also smooth out the water movement. This is how RAW 360 picture looks straight out of camera. No AI stitching is done at this moment. Import and select all the pictures on Insta360 Studio and click the export button at the right bottom corner. The app automatically stitches the pair of images into one seamless picture and this is what you get after export. Now import all the stitched images into Lightroom for color grading. Since we are working with raw pictures, we have a lot of flexibility in adjusting the color and brightness to our liking. Once color grading is done, synchronize the setting with the rest of the footage, export the pictures, and open up Premiere Pro. When you import the color graded pictures, make sure to click Options, Image Sequence, and select the youngest number file so that all the images are automatically imported chronologically. And now we have a high resolution 6.1K 360 time lapse video. Drop FX reframe effect on the clip, set keyframes as you want, and there you go, you get an awesome high quality motion lapse. Okay, this is the final destination of our journey. There is pretty much no light source at all except for the stars. Under such harsh shooting environment, we really gonna have to push the limit of the camera. My favorite setting for a star lapse on 1 in 360 is star lapse mode, ISO 800, shutter speed 30 seconds, white balance 4000. Since the stars move only 15 degrees per hour, we have to wait at least 2 to 3 hours to get dynamic movement of the stars. I didn't use any external power, but surprisingly, the battery lasted for as long as 3 hours. Star lapse mode automatically creates a JPEG time lapse preview on the mobile app, but if you want to get the best image quality, import the raw pictures into Insta360 Studio to get the stitching done, color grade the images in Lightroom and import them into Premiere Pro. It's exactly the same step as the previous tutorial. Nothing is more satisfying than seeing the result after all the hard working. If you want to get a star trail time lapse like this, it's super easy. Go back to the time lapse preview on Insta360 mobile app. You'll notice there is a little toggle right here. Turn it on and wait for the AI to finish processing. And boom, cool star trail time lapse. This time lapse function is only available for star lapse mode on the mobile app, so please keep that in mind. Alright, that's all for today's tutorial. If you have any question, leave a comment in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and inspiration. Happy shooting!